Hey my friends, Derek here from Bomb Socks, back with another week of Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So this week I'm excited to get you into Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapter 8 and chapter 13, which all have to do with Jesus speaking in parables. Now, you've heard parables from Jesus many times. I think it was his favorite mode of teaching. So if you were to go to the guide to the scriptures under parable, it says it's a simple story used to illustrate and teach a spiritual truth or a principle. So kind of like an earthly story with a spiritual truth. So it's based on comparing that idea of comparable, I guess. It's a, it's a Greek word. Comparing an ordinary object or event to a truth. And the underlying meaning or message of a parable is often hidden to listeners who are not spiritually prepared to receive it. In fact, you go into Matthew chapter 13, it shows his disciples asking, it's like, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Verse 11, he answered and said unto to them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall it be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Now I've had uh, an opportunity to teach quite a bit about Jesus's parables, and there is an old old cheesy when i say cheesy it's we're going back to i think probably mid 80s or so an old seminary video i don't i'm not going to show it to you here i don't even know where to find it these days but it had this little guy right here who was known as a sower and it, it was talking about the seminary student who was stressed out because there was some test about parables again cheesy video but he goes through and he actually explains kind of how to understand parables and it's a very brief thing and it's a very simple thing but as you see here the first thing you do is you outline the parable so you kind of take the main components of it and you just start outlining you go to the next part which is you find clues you start looking in footnotes you start looking in context you start going previous to this who is Jesus talking to what's going on where is he at you start trying to understand his audience here for example like the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10 which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks but it talks about a lawyer who comes in he's trying to trick him and he's saying master who is my neighbor and so then Jesus gives that parable of the Good Samaritan. On its own, it's a great parable, but understanding that context is an important thing as well. Then you go through and you make the comparison. Again, a parable is a setting side by side. This is where you start making that application to where this is like this. And then I think one of the most important things you can do, because parables can be so uh, different for every single person, you've got to rely on the Holy Ghost because it's going to be different for every person, like I said, who goes through these parables. So again, I think it was Jesus's favorite way to teach. Teachers, I think good teachers use parables. Uh, in fact, one of the best places to find parables nowadays is you watch General Conference. <laughs> if you were to go back to last General Conference, go back to October 2022, you had Elder Jorge Zabayos, who started off his talk almost talking about why the apostles speak in parables. Go ahead and just watch this little clip right here. Over the years, from this beautiful pulpit at the Conference Center, we have received magnificent counsel, inspiration, instruction, and revelation. On occasion, speakers have used comparisons associated with their areas of knowledge and experience to illustrate clearly and powerfully a principle of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In this way, for example, we have learned about airplanes and flights in which a tiny initial deviation can lead us to a place far from our original destination. Also in this way, we have learned from a comparison of the function of our physical heart with the powerful change of heart required to respond to the Lord's invitation to follow Him. This time, I would like to humbly add a comparison inspired from an area in the field of my professional preparation. I'm referring to the world of civil engineering. So I love how he talked about, like Elder Uchtdorf speaks about airplanes. You got Elder Renlund who speaks about cardiology and he himself making the comparison about himself as a civil engineer trying to build a life that is resistant to the adversary. So it seems like after every parable, we're gonna talk about a few of them this week. After every parable, Jesus says something to the effect of, he who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Meaning, look, now that I've shared this with you, I want you to think about what this means. So as you're thinking about, you know, as we're studying this week, and even as we have a general conference coming up in a couple weeks, 
how can you and I prepare ourselves so that we have eyes that can see, we have ears that can hear, and hearts that can understand, really in any gospel setting that we're in. Like I said, General Conference is in a couple weeks, and I know that we're going to hear some amazing parables from some amazing teachers as we do that. So we want to make sure that we are prepared properly for this. So I'm grateful that we have an opportunity to study about the parables of Jesus Christ this week, and I think it'll mean something to us if we have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts that are ready to understand. I promise you the Savior will speak to you this week in his parables, and I'm grateful for them. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks as always for sharing. Love that you do that, and please check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Godspeed. Bye-bye.